Boom. Are we on? Mm. Good Lord Almighty. We've come to another edition of the Mead, Metal, and MMA podcast with yours truly, Kevin, and, uh, well, the uh, resident reprobate, Brandon. Oh, man, I feel like shit. Well, not shit. I don't get hangovers anymore. I just get the sour stomach feel, you know, after you wake up after drinking for half a day. I was going to stop drinking. I don't uh, know. Well, see, I usually, <laughs> I always felt that fix problem, but God, man, gotta, I have to rest. <laughs> Hey, how the hell are you people doing? We haven't talked to you in like a week. We no, back a, again on Friday, two in a row this time. Having a good time, having a good time, hopefully. We, uh, yeah, we're doing a podcast this week. It'll be normal this week. It'll be normal next week, but even the week after that. Three weeks, though, things start to uh, change a little bit as, as young Brandon seeks to go out and bust his cherry. That's right. <laughs> Get that fucking MMA cherry pop. <laughs> Yeah, headed out for uh, Ultimate Fighter finale. It was going to be 213. I, it was in my heart to go the whole time, as long as uh, the Garbrandt Dillashaw fight held out. Yeah. As soon as that shit got pulled, I was like, no, no. Nah, it's it's uh, still a good card, though. I was looking. Great card I thought, still. man, it's a really good card. Now, <laughs> is it a buy? Ah! If yeah. you have your resources, maybe not. But I mean, I got my ticket to the Ultimate Fighter finale for like 50 bucks. And it's still a pretty good seat. Yeah. To get what uh, the same seat for 213 would have been about $130. So almost three times worth then. Yeah. And I was like, shit, that's like a fucking ticket to love. Beat well. love. So I was like, nah. And really, I really just want to go and see a, a fucking UFC event. Well, that's true. I mean, so, you, you went to Vegas back in January, which made sense. Um, and you're going now. Or well, here in uh, International Fight Week. If you're gonna if you're gonna catch a fight week in Vegas, that's the um, it's time to do it. It's a week to do it. Now, granted, we're gonna get to talking about our MMA stuff, but hadn't really been a big you, week for it. No, not really, uh, no, no, and it's not of... gonna be for a little bit. But um, but we're talking about Vegas. What? I don't know. Last time I was in Vegas, there were panhandlers all over the goddamn place. Uh, Have they cleaned that town up? Well, you know. Uh, I've really just when last time I went, I, majority of it I was driving. The other part I was, uh, we were taking the monorail. Uh, did walk from. Let's see. So you weren't doing like a lot of strip stuff then. Uh, one day I did went from uh, the Excalibur, all the way down that side of the strip, all the way down to Caesar's Palace, and then by then I was like, no, my fucking legs are done. We're we're hopping monorail, and you wanted to go to the Excalibur, so you'd call uh, uh, the help winches, right? That's, That's right. <laughs> I wanted to call, well, actually, I wanted to go to the Tournament of Kings, so I could do that very thing. Beer winch, yeah, <laughs> a pint of mead, a pint of mead. Holy yeah. well, shit! shit. No. I'm used to drinking that shit in like that big is boy glasses now. That gets us right into our mead segment here this week um, on the yeah, uh, proper segue, yeah. mead metal and MMA podcast. We're yeah, we're um. We talked about it last week. We thought we'd be bottling this week. I had a loss of a family member, a, uh, Indeed. a, a dog, uh, back on Sunday, which kind of derailed a lot of things. And I thought about it, and I thought, you know, the meat's not going to get worse <laughs> in another That's week. That's true. So, what, what's another week, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so we went ahead and put off our bottling efforts, and uh, we'll do that probably next Thursday, barring any other weird shit going on in uh, our personal lives. And our favorite Mexican Ruben Gonzalez has uh, sent ooh, ooh, me. A do we do we pick favorites? Well, he's my favorite. Uh, you know what? Actually, yeah. You know what? He's my favorite now too. <laughs> he's my favorite now too. Now, now that you showed me, the man has brought artwork to the table. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I gotta admit, I really dig. Uh, he stylized because normally what we do, we kind of have a template for our labels. Yeah. You know, the, the middle part is really about the only thing that changes that, and maybe the font in some spots. Right. But where things are, the name and stuff like that, then, then everything else is in place. Ruben has taken it upon himself to write a stylized runestone, uh, with a with a runestone on the bottom of it. The, uh, and it's it's really fucking cool. I didn't give him any direction on you know how we wanted it written. The fucking guy just plucked it from his brain, like Athena from Zeus. Um, it's. It's stylistically, it's got a lot of weird things going on for it. Yeah. Which make it great, though. Um, 
it has uh, it has kind of a a, a very uh, Nordic kind yeah, of very a, runic writing basically, but with a weird little kind of like you can kind of see like uh, this guy this cat kind of dig some Japanese animation. Oh sure, oh yeah, this is real. So, talking. Oh, I mean, yeah. no, no, I mean, which I think makes it really unique. Right. I mean, you can kind of you could kind of guess the flavor of two things going on with just a simple label idea that he had. Right. So we're uh, he should be done with it next week. By the time we're ready to bottle, then all that's left to do is bottle and print and get that shit out. Yeah, and, we'll and fucking uh, try it. I can't wait. We'll have, uh, yeah, we'll bottle it. I'm, I'm aiming for Thursday is what we'll try to do. And then uh, we usually, what we uh, call uh, uh, f- float the corks or let the corks settle in the simpler terms. Um, in which case, then we usually, that's about a week-long process. And then after that, then we'll slap the labels on, get the shrinks going on, and... Uh, Get them out to you, fine people, and uh, and Krista, our first uh, donator on this particular batch. Um, I was talking to her earlier about it, and uh, yeah, she's uh, looking forward to it. So, you know, we uh, a while back we were kind of floating around the idea of doing like personalized uh, labels. Yeah, you know, like this bottle, a gift from this person. Uh, very feasible. We can do that. Oh yeah, no, we absolutely. We can definitely do that. So I mean, it's got to be, um, it's got to be at least a one case order. That's what yeah. it's got to be. Um, yeah, w- and we'll personalize out your labels however you want to do it, whatever kind of a batch. I mean, I don't want to get crazy. I don't want somebody saying, "Well, I, I would like a dandelion batch," because I don't know. We have, I mean, things we haven't tried yet. I, I, I'm kind of opposed to that. Right. But if it's an existing batch that we have done before, I'm, I'd be happy to do it. Um, it'd be a, a one case order for 12 bottles and we would be able to personalize labels. Does it get better than that? I don't think it does. It does. It <laughs> does get better than that. <laughs> Using my Billy Mays approach to, uh, all things involved. The, uh, God rest his soul. We, uh, uh, you know, cocaine's a hell of a drug. The, uh, according to Rick James. <laughs> so what we, uh, have looked into is that we have found ways for, um, I did have it. Uh, a question was brought to my um, for th- to the forefront. What would it cost to get you guys to do me a full batch? Well, and a batch it kind of varies. I mean, we aim for five gallons, but obviously the gods have to have their cut. Absolutely. And if it's a fucking hundred and fifty degrees outside, then nature's going to take its cut. And uh, you know, and then you start adding a lot of amendments in things like that, and then uh, and those those are going to go to the uh, the dregs in the bottom. You know, we'll end up with you, you should be able to get 24 750 liter milliliter bottles out of one batch. Right. We usually get 20, 22. Between maybe. 20 and 22. Yeah. You know, um, now we're starting to compensate a little bit more so we can try to aim for 24. Now it's probably still going to be probably yeah. 23. Our batch of green like, man, we're trying to hit 24. So. Yeah, uh, uh, we're hoping so. So we'll see what happens with that now. For those of you though that are saying, look, I don't want 24 bottles. How about, could I get your mead in one big oak barrel that's been fired and everything else and primed and uh, treated and raring to go? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. With the all-new barrel option here at Echoes of Ancients. That's right. Yeah, we, uh, we looked into it. And we figured out, you know what? Let's, people like barrels. We actually have found somebody that would do us a very... Um, would do us a solid on uh, if we end up going and because we can do individual purchases of a barrel at a time before the only time I could find a price cuts we're doing five or ten at a whack I don't right. want to do that I don't want to backlog ourselves into some shit like that and it'd be, it'd be, it'd be, I don't want to turn it into a storehouse really right um, so uh, we did find a company and they uh, they do char American oak barrels uh, it's a medium char that they put on it and what we can do is we can do a full batch just for you. Matter of fact, we can even personalize the f- the, uh, the the facade of the front of that barrel. If there, if you have a name or a logo you want to put on, it, it's, it's got to uh, be a simple logo though. You got to get with us on yeah. this because we're we, we we'll talk, but we can do it. it ain't gonna be cheap because you're basically getting an entire batch, two cases of mead. With your own barrel, and, and it's a quality barrel with a, with a steel uh, hoops and uh, proper oak staves, 
with a proper wooden spigot with a proper bung on it and everything else. It's it's legit. You got to have a proper bung hole, kids. It's <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll talk. And we're looking at uh, between depending on the batch that you might be interested in, six to seven hundred dollars. Fucking hey, oh, I'm, I'm down for one for a donation. I want troublemaker that. in that bitch. Well, yeah, yeah, but, but present the cash, my good man. See, so, yeah, I'll, I'll plop down about six hundred dollars and just be like, "Here, it's all mine." Actually, I, I uh, want fucking Ragnar burned in on the end. Considering how many bottles of Troublemaker you've bought, you, that'd be actually uh, kind of a cost-effective. Yeah, no shit, you. right? <laughs> it would kind of fuck up my Thursday routine, but it'd be like, no, no shit. It's always already here. But we and do also, uh, also the the fucking flavoring flavor effects you'd get from having it in a goddamn cask like that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, if that's some you if that's a direction you want to go. Let us know, and we can work with you on that. So. And uh, for those of you that have a little less uh, money in your pocket, we're also going to, to try out the uh, plastic bladder option as well. Would you like to buy our meat in a box? That sounds like a terrible hey, idea. Hey, man, we got, we got to cater to everybody. <laughs> Times are tough in this new regime. Uh, I think the last one might be a joke, but yeah, but the uh, the oak barrel, no joke. That's uh, yeah, no, that's from real shit. Yeah, that's uh, six eh, between six and seven fifty, depending on what it is that you want. So, um, all right, that's probably good enough for the uh, mead component of the uh, show this week. Let's move on to metal. Always a good time to talk about metal. You know, I actually fucking broke down and finally listened to uh, a song off the new Winter Sun album. Okay. Is it, did it change your life? Do you, now, do you now sip your coffee with two hands on a cup rather than one hand on a hand? Staring off into the distance <laughs> thinking about life? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, it's okay. It's okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not going to be bad. I mean, let's face facts. Considering. I mean, we'd be a couple of assholes if we were like, oh, it's going to be terrible, man. Well, no. see, I, 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 that's kind of what I was afraid of. I was like, shit, is my opinion on how they got here going to affect what i think about the music because i mean I, i've never had one thing to say bad about the music the music has always been great right uh it's good is, is their approach to how they're marketing this bitch and it's right. terrible and i'll That's tell you terrible. what for running as big a goddamn fundraise they did they sure didn't put a whole lot into their video budget because <laughs> yeah. it it well, looks like it was just filmed in the darkness with them just jamming but it's all about yari uh, you are in menopause, and um, yeah. Even when they fucking video, unless there's a video of him just doing his stupid, weird Yari thing, that's about the only way that that not shows work. all band members. But it's just it looks like it's a video that we could have pulled off. Oh, well, that's terrible because basically exactly. our uh, our equipment's basically uh, uh, smartphones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's good. It's good. I will listen to the whole album. I will not pay. I, I might fucking get his physical copy of nuclear blast but i'm not gonna fucking pay no no 50 dollars for no digital content just like i am paying no 50 cents for no coke are they still are they still pushing like some other extras and uh, shit like that well they they after it initially ended they just said and they're like now yeah basically anybody can go get this digital download i'm, I'm sure that the thing is done like yeah. i'm sure you probably can't do it anymore but well see i don't know i'm in the dark because frankly I talked enough smack on their Facebook page to get banned again. So, uh, I you got know. banned twice. Yeah, <laughs> Winter Sun banned you twice. Oh yeah, no, I didn't. T- I, I didn't reveal this a couple no, weeks ago. Oh shit. Yeah, no, no, no. I got on there and I said, "Hey, Nuclear Blast has got a great option." I put the link, and uh, <laughs> you linked. Oh uh, <laughs> shit. I mean, they're still getting paid. Yeah, exactly. They're maybe they're not just getting a hundred percent like they are on the fucking Indiegogo cocksucking campaign, but right. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so and there's, it, there's a oh very God, venal yes. little person running their shit, and it might be Yari himself. I it's Yari running it. Of course <laughs> it is. I, it, fuck, I want to go in there and be like, hey, you know that $50 you spent on nothing, basically? Well, here, 50 bucks will get you like a T-shirt, a vinyl, d- uh, the hard copy, yeah. a digital download, Dave release, the whole nine yards. And I understand it's because they're backed by fuck. It's you, label shit. Which you, do you think Nuclear Blast drops them like a bad habit once? Because uh, I think they've got. Depends on it. Depends on if the sales hurt. If I, them doing that hurt the sales of the album for oh, them, do you know it will. Well, fuck yeah. There's no way it hasn't. Well, it, it, the, the fans that popped out 150 dollars just to keep fucking supporting, they're also going to buy this shit. I mean, obviously. 
fool and his money easily parted. There's something that comes to mind about that. Indeed. All right. Uh, Five Finger Death Punch. The, the Lubbock Metal Band. Yeah. I mean, they're not from Lubbock, but I call them they Lubbock. They play there a lot, yeah. Yeah. They used to. Not, not anymore, uh, but used to. Yeah, apparently uh, the lead singer fell off fucking wagon of AA and has uh, basically quit the band on stage. In a pretty vehement fashion, he's like, this is my last show with Five Finger Death Punch, and then he fucking does a throat-cutting motion. It's like, shit. So, because, because of the demon liquor? Yes, because of the demon liquor. Well, we'll let him know that if he needs some support on tour from Echoes of Ancient's Meadery. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, if you want to if you want to phone in to the show next week and talk about what really happened, we're your friends. We're your pals. Hey, buddy. Hey, Ivan. <laughs> man, what the hell is down? going on? Um, our friends over this week in metal uh, talking about some shit going on with Ghost. Oh, man. Well, yeah, we talked about that a couple weeks ago where... Uh, Papa Emeritus the third, Tobias uh, Forge, the lead guy of Ghosts, is being yeah, uh, sued. To- Toby Forge, yeah, yeah Tobias right. Forge, Tobias Tobias either or. I call him Toby because <laughs> that's the last thing he nah, wants man. anybody to call him. His so. name is Kunta Kinte, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, uh, Christ, oh he got How are we sued. Still doing a podcast. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I don't know. All right. Thankfully, the people who listen to us about have the same type of <laughs> humor man. that we do. Rock on. Uh, yeah. He, uh, when we first talked about it, he was just being sued by one guy. And then he got sued by a couple other people in the interim. Uh, but now it's basically just come out that dude's like, look, this is mine. All of you are interchangeable parts, which is true. It is true, but it's fucked up the way he put it because he said, just because you have a unique sound that you bring to the table does not necessarily mean that you are an active. Exactly, yeah. Uh, he didn't use the word star. An active, uh, an active uh, component of our right. work, and, and then that, when which is bullshit. Yeah. That's bullshit. That'd be like telling Neil Peart when Rush is running around, I was like, "Yeah, we like your drum solos and shit, but yeah, yeah, yeah we could get another drummer just because you sound this way doesn't mean shit." Well, I mean, it, it's, it's basically a reinforced point that they're all hired guns except for him. He's the only essential cog in the wheel. It, so the uh, the Ogalock thing is uh, is kind of an epidemic and it's starting to spread a little bit like the Black Death in Europe well, back in Agalog, the dark ages. If Agalog had gotten as popular as Ghost, they'd probably still be together. Nah, I guess. You know. But it takes away, just like that broad said on, uh, what was it, Metal Injection? <laughs> 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 For our... Uh, for our politically correct friends, yeah, no, no, um, yeah, no. This oh, week you can't battle. say broad anymore. Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, you can. Good. You right. can on this. Okay, I mean, because shit, we've only, there's like 15 people listening to this hey, podcast. I, I love the ladies. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, no. That that was what was, what was pointed out on this week in metal. And uh, yeah. And by the way, and check those people out because they do a fantastic three minute recap of what's going on. Yeah, basically just called Ghost his project, and when people in the band are told they are not essential, they get a little hurt. Which I guess that is that is true. Well, they should be because it's not called the uh, Tobias Forge Band; it's called Ghost, and that means that uh, tells me that there's been some multiple influences that are going on from other people that are providing input into their own particular skill set into this band, and this asshole has got this uh, this prima donna approach to uh, how he wants to conduct yeah. business. And like the I won't call her broad this time. Like that gal said on that video. Uh, it takes away the mystique of the band. Because that, that's really what made Ghost kind of cool. You had no fucking idea who any of these people were. Right. Now you know who they all are. And it's just like, well, it, just kind of like when Slipknot, lo- like you saw him without the mask, people fucking just lost their minds. And some of the mystique was gone. Thankfully, you know, they kind of recovered. Well, but we don't, but we don't want to see our bands with all their warts. We don't. Yeah. I mean. But just like Kiss, when they fucking took the fa- face paint off, they just had four gross-looking... Jewish dudes. Yeah. Like, man, these oh, people look shit. like they ain't from here. That's <laughs> Damn, Gene Simmons has to paint his face to look like that, which, by the way, we should probably touch on that a little bit. On the uh, Gene the Simmons Gene thing? Gene Simmons trying to fucking trademark whatever weird, sh- shitty version of the devil horns he uses, which is with the thumb sticking out. He uh, tried to go to the U.S. Patent Office uh, with his whole uh, index finger and pinky finger Extended, but with a thumb at a particular angle. Well, I'm co- I'm, I'm fairly confident they're going to tell him to go fuck himself. Absolutely, absolutely. He's tra- trying to trademark something that 
he says he came up with that variant. It's obvious. It's not the Dio one. It's not the Dio devil horn, so it's automatically bullshit. Which, by anyway. the way, Dio never tried to copyright yeah, his Yeah, and you're either. in a rock show. Who the fuck throws that up at a I rock want, show? I want to make sure I've got the right and proper angle of my thumb. Only and, time and, you fucking do that is when Jimmy Snook is about to jump off the top <laughs> rope. It, it is. It's a loose thumb kind of a thing. Yeah, it's bullshit. Thing. It's fucking bullshit. Every concert I've been to, god damn, even some country concerts, which is weird, you see people are throwing that sign. Right. So for Gene Simmons to go, yeah, but mine's different because you extend the thumb a little bit. Well, he's fucked up. Well, this is a guy that fucking made coffins, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Which, by the way, Dimebag Daryl was buried in a kiss coffin. With, really? Uh, yeah, with the guitar that Eddie Van Halen, that fucking yellow one, that yellow and black guitar. Yeah. They buried him with that. So uh, basically, weird segue. Back Darryl's like yeah. kind of involved in a lot of bands. I just don't flat care for anymore. Well, it was it, he always because he was a huge Kiss fan. Yeah. He was a huge Van Halen fan. I was a huge Van Halen fan, kind of. I mean, I, he, I, I'd he, probably say a huge Eddie Van Halen fan. I'd say More classic than, Van Halen when uh, David Lee Roth was there. I didn't care for uh, Sammy Hagar coming in because yeah. uh, dude was rocking the shit out with Montrose, you know? Right. I mean, uh, don't believe me. Go check it out on YouTube. Sammy Hagar, Montrose, look at that. But then he, so he comes over after his uh, I Can't Drive 55, which I thought was a bit popish uh, for what I care for. And they made even more popish music with, uh, over with uh, Van Halen. So, yeah. But the thing is, what, when they went and dicked over Michael Anthony here a couple of years ago, Eddie Vedder, or Eddie Vedder, Eddie Van Halen, throwing him under a bus, saying basically he had to teach him all the bass lines he ever played for Van Halen, and that, uh, you know, and all this crap, but talking shit about him. Well, then, so then Sammy Hagar comes out and goes, hey, you know, leave, leave Mikey alone. That guy was the first one at practice, the last one to leave, and he has some serious skills as a bass player. And he was the fat guy in the band. Well, he didn't have the right last name. You know name. he probably got the la- the least pussy out of all four. Maybe. Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe. I, I, I don't know. What was the name of the goddamn drummer? The drummer uh, brother? Alex Van Halen. Yeah, yeah, he probably got the least because he looked like a dick. Probably, uh, probably Eddie Van Halen because uh, he probably couldn't stop long enough from talking about himself. And fucking so, doing know. lines of coke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know about all that nonsense, but hey. Um, but, but I will say this, though, is that no, no. After the treatment of Michael Anthony, I don't give two shits about yeah. what Van Halen ever does. The rest of my life, the remaining my remaining days. I stopped giving a shit after I heard New Tattoo. Well, <laughs> I, that, that, that makes more sense, but I'm looking at the human factor. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, let's see. A lot of metalheads born on this day. Um, 1966, MC Ren from NWA, which... Uh, Stands for something. Yeah, that's uh, a <laughs> couple of different meanings. I have from well, what I the, the, the particular one here, you yeah. know, in word with attitude. Yes. Uh, and to keep in the same vein as metal, uh, two pack shaker <laughs> was born today. So we're doing basically just a rundown of rap birthdays. There's only fucking people born today. If you want to count Gary Roberts from the Boomtown Rats, Ice Cube was born yesterday. By the way. Uh, 49 no shit. years of age. Oh, wow. uh, best movie from him besides Fridays, the whole Friday series. Oh, I was about to say next Friday. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't like the barbershop movies. No. Uh, Fuck, what else has he been in? <laughs> I think I might have only. Horrible, uh, horrible movie, but I'd say Anaconda. Uh, yeah. Or, uh, let's see, what was it, Boys in the Hood mm-hmm. that he was in? Mm-hmm. That was pretty good. But. Uh, yeah, I, not a hard role for him to have to research to play, but he played it well. Man, but he caught so much shit for people saying that he wasn't hood enough. You know, I mean that was even back when he was, you know, when when he first really kind of got yeah. started. You know, well shit, dude's rich. That's why. He, well, that's the whole thing. When you start getting a little bit of money in your pocket, and people, and more of it's coming from the theater than it is from the fucking CDs. Yeah, sales. then people start to question how legit you are. So. Yeah. Uh, he's too legit to quit, though. I like guys. That. That's, that's wrong, wrong artist. But yeah, listen, you hear my heart beating. <laughs> Man, it's just the chronic. You'll be fine. Uh, well, I think it might be time to move on. Yeah, no, to no. Uh, a section where, like I said, there really hasn't been a whole lot of big things going on this week in MMA. None. I mean, does anything come to mind to you? 
Uh, fights last weekend. Uh, good job, Mark Hunt, I guess. Getting, yeah, that was good. Uh, getting another that was win. Good. But, I mean, it's not like he's at his point in his career where a win means he's looking like, hey, I have a, I, I give me a yeah. shot at the title. He, he's, he, he's past no, that. And, and he hasn't really looked for one. He, uh, actually, he called out fucking Overeem and uh, – Well, saying Overeem's a dirtbag because once you use uh, steroids once, then you're always going to be that kind yeah. of that guy. Oh, I know what's happened this week. The fight is on August 26th. Is it August or September 26th? August 26th. Um, Conor McGregor and uh, Floyd Mayweather apparently are. The fight you said would never happen is happening. Oh, good. Well, we'll, we'll see. I'm excited. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see. You, you can't tell me you're not a little bit excited. Oh, no, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I, I'm so happy, especially they got. I mean, he got it done fast for what you would consider. Well, Pacquiao, Mayweather. Pacquiao had to wait five, six years to get a fight. Yeah, Mayweather. since like '09, I think they ranked in 2010 the potential Pacquiao Mayweather fight as you know the biggest fight of all time. But then it happened six years too late. Yeah, um, it's going to be a boxing match. Ten ounce gloves, twelve rounds at 154. I think 154 yeah. pounds. So, I mean, but I, my, my problem is this, is that there's a lot of bad things that are going to come out of this. First of all, MMA fans are going to say, you know, obviously McGregor and Mayweather are on the same level, and they're not. Because yeah, you can't look at it as like the, uh, that McGregor is up there with him. He's not. There's never been a more apples to oranges comparison. Hey, if this thing was taking place in an octagon... Oh, shit. It'd be Tony goddamn Couture all over again, man. Yeah. I mean, exactly. But the problem is, no, it's in Floyd Mayweather's. Right. It's, it's in his district. That's all he does. <laughs> he is, is the box. congressman of this area. And, uh, and, and he is going to be, uh, he, he's made an entire career, 49-0 and 0 career, yep. out of not getting punched. And everybody keeps saying, well, McGregor's got that left. He's got that left. Okay. But and he's only got to hit you once with it, man. I don't know. I don't think so. And Mayweather, and much like McGregor, because Nate Diaz, when he clipped McGregor, legit, you saw it, and McGregor was hurt. He'd never been hit like that before. Yeah. So it's not like he – we don't know if he's granite or not. Probably in a boxing match, he should be fine. I don't see him getting knocked out. No, probably not. I mean, because uh, uh, Mayweather's not exactly a knockout artist. Right. His skill is not getting hit. And to lay, lay leather enough on somebody to win every round. And I fully expect he will win 11 out of 12 rounds against McGregor. Now, yeah. but the thing is, by this fight taking place this fast, it makes me wonder if Mayweather's looking at it like, yeah, I'll take a big-ass paycheck, and I don't even have to hardly train for this guy. That might be. That's a damn good point. That might be the thing that actually makes McGregor probably really dangerous in this fight. So, okay, we both agree. I mean, me, I, I have no delusions that McGregor is going to win. However, if he does, it'll be f the most fucking amazing thing in sports to ever happen since the uh, fucking Patriots won the Super Bowl in overtime. Which I don't know why I went to that. <laughs> like, really? Because like, because like, my Forty Nine er blood was like, "You son of a bitch! You didn't even all, say the catch." The best of all things that are pedestrian in sports. It'll be, it'll be the biggest, and yeah, that's really more a comeback. We're talking upsets here. Yeah, this is going to be, especially if you want to look at it in the MMA world, it'll be the biggest fucking well, underdog the, win since the Vegas Dillashaw. odds. The Vegas odds are going to be just crazy. It's going to be twelve to one. Shit, well, I'm down there. I might fucking put a bet down on McGregor. I, I would. I'd throw a huh. Well, I, don't know. I think it's uh, at the Stratosphere at the bookie there. It's like fifty dollar minimum bet. Yeah, I think. I mean, put a hundred on McGregor and shit. You never yeah, know. That's then like, like might, fucking uh, twenty to one money. I'll be I'll be watching the fight over here and sit there, be like, oh shit. Well, I need to get back to Vegas yeah. to collect a check. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's unless they'd mail me one, that'd be great. You know. And otherwise, you're uh, hey, you're out a hundred bucks. Well, yeah. You know, and then you know, yeah. But uh, okay, so like I said, we both agree McGregor isn't going to win this fight. What would you call it though? What does he need to do to make it at least a success for him? 
win a couple rounds, maybe yeah. like visibly hurt him. Maybe, but I, I, my problem that I truly have, yeah, yeah, you have to watch, you have to watch Mayweather fights. Sure. The guy doesn't get hit. That's no. the problem I have is because all these people go, oh, that one left. Yeah, but he's got to lay it though. Yeah, and and, and Mayweather has made a living. By God, uh, uh, probably maybe the best boxer that has ever lived has made a living out of not getting touched by everybody's left because everybody has a great left. True. That's the problem. Uh, how does Connor? Uh, what's a win for him? A win for him is to go the distance. I think to not get finished. Yeah. I mean, and and Mayweather's not a finisher. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that, that Floyd Mayweather's going to come out like a. Uh, like some shit out like Tyson punch out. Yeah, you know, be, yeah I but, think he's knocked out like two people in ten years. Yeah, but um, but still, the guy is a legitimate boxer. Absolutely, Conor McGregor has got a whole toolbox full of shit that he could that he could win with if it was anything except a boxing match. Oh, did you also? I heard today uh, where there's a clause that says if Conor kicks Mayweather, his ass is getting sued. Yeah. Which I think is great. Like, they had to really do that. Oh, yeah. Do they think Conor's well, going to go up there and just roundhouse kick Mayweather? That's the fear out of, uh, oh, out of the boxing community. Fuck. Now, here's the problem, that's though. So, so, Floyd Mayweather wins at his own game. Boxing idiot, or I'm sorry, boxing fans are going to say, <laughs> hey, see, see, that's, that's the sport of kings right there. This MMA shit is nonsense. And it's not. It's not. Oh, no, that, that's not a valid argument at all. Um. You know, but the, that's that's the problem. My other, the other fear that I have because I do like to watch Conor McGregor uh, finish fools in, uh, in the UFC. He wins a hundred million dollars out of this fight. Now, granted, there's a whole bunch of that going to go to trainers, a whole bunch <coughs> going to go to uh, marketing, a whole bunch of this. Uh, th- there's a lot of things on his side. He'll be lucky to see fifty million dollars. But you know what? He'll be lucky. $50 million is a life changer. Absolutely. And what then becomes the incentive for him to ever fight in the UFC again? I know that Dana White said. Yeah, which I mean, again, we know Dana lies to us every once in a while. Well, or, or all the time, whichever you want to call it. But, yeah. but you got to think, with it being Connor, there hasn't been a whole lot of fibs. I, and I... I I want to see him fight by the end of the year. If that dude fights on a the New Year's Eve card for next for this year, if he ever fights on a UFC card again, especially God, even especially if heaven forbid he actually gets a win, I don't think we'll ever see him in the octagon yeah. again. Well, then I mean, why, why would he? Well, it's just like why does LeBron keep playing basketball if he makes fucking forty mil a year? Sure. Well, you know, I mean, along with all of his other title offenses, why not? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, wait, oh, wait. <laughs> That's why, man, he has to come back and defend that belt. He didn't defend 145. Well, they wouldn't let him. They no, took it away he from had him. No, no, he had no desire. He went from 145 to fighting 170 and lost. Yeah, fought again there and won. And, and, then, and then won the rematch, so he's 1-1 one one against uh, Diaz brothers. And then, but Which still, that should be the fucking fight to make at 155. Diaz McGregor for the belt. That, it makes perfect sense. That would make sense. It would probably be. I guarantee it'd be the. Be, it beat the previous one. Beat the and previous maybe fire. it will be because boxing, as we know, you're not going to take the damage you take yeah. in the MMA and in, in MMA, and in, well, in the UFC particular. So I think for McGregor to come out of that with smelling rosy, if he wins three rounds of the twelve. Ah, uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> it's, he which might again, get one yeah, tough he to might do. Get one. So you think one is is a victory though? For him, it is. Yeah, I think. But I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, um, I'm uh, just glad to see it. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, other MMA related stuff. Matt Hughes. Our uh, thoughts go out to right. him. Uh, involved in a train accident today. Yeah, it said he just fucking drove up on the tracks and got hit on the passenger side. And I guess it was just him. Thankfully. I mean, what the yeah. fuck is up with that? I don't know, and I don't want to. I don't want to speculate, but man, it sounds fishy. It sounds it's, like Junior Seau. Sounds type very of shit. much yeah, like right? Junior Seau. You're yeah. right. You're right. It sounds like a guy 
there's like, all right, let it take my life. But you know what? I want to make sure my brains are still intact for them to be able to figure out what the hell's going on. Better way to do it than a fucking train, man. Uh, I got, yeah, <laughs> yeah, know. absolutely. I mean, and that so guy was actually still entertaining ideas of coming back. To the right. Octagon. Oh, I mean, he hadn't fought since yeah. 2011, but which would be a bad idea. But well, Chuck Liddell's also thinking about coming uh, back to oh, to fight Tito again. I'd watch that fight. Well, yeah, I, I would watch it too. But as I'm long all, as it wasn't I will Bellator, talk shit all day. If it was in Bellator, then I wouldn't, because I know Tito would be winning it in some bullshit way, just like he did the fucking Chell fight. Mm. All right. Well, um, okay. So there's, Singapore. Yeah, there's a huge, huge fight coming on at 2:30 a.m. Mountain Time. So basically in about seven and a half hours, fights start. Yeah, for those of you that hang on our every word, I guess we can talk about it. But. No, well, really the only thing to talk about in it is does Holly Holm lose her job if she loses this fight against Betch? Oh, she loses against Betch Cohea? Yeah, yeah, but she's not going to lose. Betch Cohea might be the most unorthodox, unskilled f- striker. That we've seen the game right. that has come out of Brazil ever, ever uh, men's, women's, I don't care. Her, With, that's why I raise the question. If, her if, stand-up game is so terrible. If she, if Holly Holm goes up there and goes five rounds with her, which they, you're not going to get a finish in this fight. No, Holly Holm will finish her. In the you second, think so? I don't round. think she will. I, I don't think Holly Holm has the capacity to do that in the UFC anymore. Well, she got lucky against Ronda Rousey. Oh man, Ronda, that's Ronda came in trying to be a career. striker. Holly Holm, let's not forget, is um, a veteran boxer and kickboxer. You get somebody that's a striker that's kind of uh, let's call her what let's call it what it is somebody that's a little dumb, <laughs> like Cody Garbrandt. Yeah, a little stupid, a little bit, a little stupid. Batch Cohea is that kind of dumb. So I hope, I hope he doesn't knock on our door. Yeah. By the way, I'll give uh, Cody uh, just get a hold of me. I'll give you the uh, address here, and it'd be it'd be awesome, fun to yeah. shoot video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be sure to send him out to like my shop at night, so I have the advantage. <laughs> like, be here at two a.m. Oh, send send him over to a spelling contest. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Send him to a public speaking event. Oh, uh, Lord Almighty! Are we done with this shit this week? <laughs> I think we're good. Yeah, I, really I mean. Uh, I, I got a reminder about uh, it's been 18 months, year and a half since our mead was uh, fucking put on display on uh, the Beard and Board Game Show. Oh yeah, yeah. Went back. Yeah, and well, the uh, time hop kind of popped up, uh, and it has been. Uh, I think we actually had bottled our first batch ever, like two years ago, like three weeks ago. I think right? so. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I've, I had to go back and watch the episode. Of course, I have I have the full three hour video uh, because while they were doing it, they gave us a link to the show. And we just basically got drunk and watched it. Sure, because it was really as one should do. And, it, and I was really freaked out about it because I was like shit. I really hope they enjoy it. And I wasn't sure about the Scarborough Fair, which if we haven't, if we've talked about Scarborough Fair on here, yet. yeah, our our herbal meat, parsley, attempt. sage, rosemary, and thyme. Yeah. Yes. Um, we sent them that, and we sent them a bottle of the first run of Troublemaker, which we bottled in cobalt blue bottles. Yep. And the label that was when Ragnar was born. Or a little, uh, our little bee, uh, a little bee friend. Yeah. Um, but they they drank it on the show. They had some great, especially about the Scarborough Fair. Yeah, there's a, this was not what I was expecting. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what you kind of got with that one. So. Yeah, because they were probably expecting something like a Viking's Blood or a Bun Ratty Mead. Which are very, very sweet because they got the honey back. Yeah. Where ours doesn't. Ours is, it's the natural sweet, and that's it. This is, we, we make the shit the Vikings drank. Right. You know, a uh, thousand years ago. So. Which uh, I'm going to throw a link to that video down there. Go check it out. Go check them out. Blame Society Films. Uh, they did the, uh, the Chad Vader stuff, the, uh, the, de- uh, the supermarket manager shows well and aaron yonda's uh lady friend has uh got a record out by the way i need to pick that up she that picked, hinterlands uh, album put out like a uh, what a month ago or something like that so check that out courtney there's a plug courtney so. collins saucy voice I, she needs to read books and tape it because <laughs> i'd be able to sleep so well <laughs> i go thank god I'm like, weird, weird oh, bugaboo going but, with this weird bug nonsense. yeah see i was going and then i go somewhere like <laughs> almost at worst just reflecting upon me it's like god i have to have someone read to me so i can go to bed 
But it ain't because I'm a child. It's because I have tinnitus and I need <laughs> noise to go to sleep. Oh, uh, crap. All right, man. I'll tell you what. That's it for us this week. Um, do uh, do check out some of the stuff we've been talking about. Actually, uh, Elder's new record that we've been talking about, Reflections of a Floating World. Check it out. Check out Paul Bearer. <laughs> Check out the Winter Sun song if you want. Check out Beer and Board Games. There's a lot of shit to check out. Uh, my picks for the week, uh, Bullet Rye Whiskey. I'm going to have to agree with you on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to pick Troublemaker, but it's all gone. Love you, Troublemaker. Yeah. It was uh, great drinking 19 bottles of you over four months' time. Christ almighty. Yeah, you were the best customer there. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. As far as, uh, let's see, mead, metal, metal. Uh, I'm I'm still, I'm sticking with my uh, reflections of a uh, floating world, Elder. I'm going Metallica's Load, whole album. And uh, f- fights, MMA. Uh, I'm going to go, let's see, because that fight's only coming up a couple hours. I'm going to go with uh, Matt Hughes being okay. I'm going to go with Conor McGregor knocking out Floyd Mayweather in the third round. So you have like three months of shit then. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. All right, so little heathens. Um, Brandon and I are thinking about doing some other things. Uh, I don't know. We're bouncing it off of you guys, those that listen to us. We love doing this podcast for free. This is kind of our, uh, our anchor for a Friday. It begins our weekend officially. If you're wanting more shit from us, and I don't know why you would, but if you do, <laughs> um, we're considering – some maybe members only content i don't know we're bouncing the idea around we're it's, it's like one of those little squids from the uh, 1980s you throw it against a wall and watch it kind of climb down your wall yeah. and, thinking about maybe even trying out the uh uh recording it visually and putting that we on there i, I think that's an eventuality we are going to get to so yeah. it's, it's just a matter of time Let's get time, ready for so. that people oh man anyway, but let us know i mean comment comment on our page on facebook if you want but comment on youtube that'd be even easier um and so that way we can do the like do the share do the subscribe that's what they say on youtube to do yeah that, i guess that makes you rich so uh, like share we subscribe. had one goddamn red cent <laughs> we i think combined <laughs> All of our, our all of our podcasts, we would have enough to get like a dollar. Yeah, but they have to all be on one video. I'm just gonna have to tell them. Just hold on to it, boys. We'll cash in later. But anyway, but the thing, what what we do want to say though is thanks for um, for checking out what we're trying to do, uh, and we'll, we'll we'll keep doing it. Yeah. Um, spread it around. Yeah, yeah. Let your uh, let your friends know. Go uh, go post it somewhere. Like, if there's an MMA board. That you frequent because we know uh, MMA fans, they love to berate shit. Oh, yeah. Put a link over there, send them our way. Yeah, we're looking forward to a whole bunch of thumbs down on our yeah, stuff. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. I mean, right. shit, that, when I got Yari thumbs down, I just felt <laughs> it made me feel like I did a lot. Go out and get yourself banned from Winter Sun's page. That's always a fun thing to twice, do. Twice, dude. Twice, that's twice. a goddamn achievable right there. I haven't All right. even done it once, and I laugh at their <laughs> shit every time they post it. No matter yeah, I know, what but it is. I, my, my stuff hurts, so that's why. But. All right. Well, hey, you heathens. It's been great hanging out with you. Um, Have a grand fucking week, and we'll uh, check back with you again coming up next week on the uh, Mead, Metal, and MMA podcast. Good night, friends.